Hi, my name's Ronnie uh, and welcome to our session, uh, Using Technology to Enable and Empower Psychedelic Medicine. Uh, it is a real pleasure to be here uh, and a pleasure to be part of the SciTech team. Uh, Deb, a huge thanks to this and all previous uh, events. We look forward to having live events, but until then, we're going to have to uh, enjoy these fabulous virtual events. Uh, and also huge thanks to Kat uh, for joining us. Uh, Kat Horton is a PhD and co-founder and the research director of Illumiview. Um, Kat has worked closely with over 900 families uh, struggling with uh, autism. And that work inspired Kat uh, and her colleagues to look at what tools and uh, we can use to try and help those families. Um, those, her work in, in, set, in wearables and sensors uh, led to the development of Illumiview. Um, Kat, thanks for joining us. Uh, at SciTech. Yeah, thank you, Ronnie. I appreciate your being here with me. In the limited time that we have, let's jump in. Um, so you've been doing this for, for many years. What do you think is the biggest change you've seen over the time you're doing it uh, from what you arrived to where we are now? Yeah, so we started doing this in 2009, which was really early. At that point in the US, hospitals didn't even have electronic health records. So we've come a long way since then. Uh, we started with a web-based platform for parents of children with autism and rapidly moved into then adding in native apps, using phone sensors, wearable sensors, other sensors that are around the home um, so that we can collect basically a vast amount of data from all sorts of different channels on one person as well as well as the subjective channel as well as their self-report what they're telling us on validated questionnaires um, to be able to just give the kind of data that 10 years ago we couldn't even imagine the amount of data was possible okay so taking that data um it, i can imagine in any field uh, and uh, for autism mental health in, in particular uh where the subjective experience is is both so important but also it's always subjective um, looking at uh, uh, psychedelic medicine, how do you think we can take the, the lessons you've learned and adapt them to, to, to our uh, use, which is a little different? Yeah, so I think there's two pieces. One is much better, better data collection, much finer grained data collection. So from all these multiple different channels, but the other, and the other piece of it is what we call just in time intervention. So the ability to, to be able to, for the algorithms on the app to be able to learn somebody's patterns and to be able to know when something's a little off, when they they seem like they may be struggling. And at that point to be able to deliver content that's been provided by the clinicians, that's been personalized to that person and get it to them at the moment when they need it so they don't have to wait for the so next first person. it gets to know their baseline their, their their personal and then looks for variations and then when that happens it responds either it, it is a trigger or something else is that right is that exactly yeah so you can personalize not only the content of the uh, the intervention that's delivered to them but the timing of it too which is crucial you can't do that with traditional methods because you're not with the person 24 hours a day Awesome. So I think that's one of the things that we're looking to do in our partnership together with you as we bring that technology to market with, uh, with Tovana. Uh, Tovana is looking to provide safe and personalized uh, medicine, you know, using the, the personal baseline, but also using protocol driven uh, therapies. Um, in, in your you know, decade or two, uh, uh, what have you seen? What type of examples have you seen outside of, of psychedelic medicine that we can take and learn from? Hmm. Yeah, so, so I mean, so many, we've re supported hundreds of research studies since 2009. Um, some of the ones that come to mind, one with Harvard Medical School, they were looking at suicide ideation, which previous to this study was considered to be sort of one thing, you're either thinking about suicide or not, through asking people four times a day, what they were, the, the nuances of what they were thinking, they were able to discover, I think, five different phenotypes of suicide ideation, which helps just to get much more specific about what kind of intervention is going to be relevant in that that specific moment for that person. Um, so that, that's one way it's being used. It's currently being used by the University of Utah um, with people who are addic addicted to prescription opioids and using mindfulness to help them have another path. Um, so, so that's an example of the, the way it's been used as, as an intervention to help both deliver the intervention, but then gather data at the same time to find out, is this particular type of content at this time for this person, is it useful or not? And then how do we change it to make it more useful? 
Well, you can only imagine everyone who's watching this, how excited I am to work with Kat and Illumaview and, and help bring this uh, to the psychedelic uh, community. Um, we, we hope to provide more insight uh, for the therapist and the patient.